Hey everybody, how are you? Well, we survived taping. <laughs> I'll talk about that in a few minutes. Um, it has delightfully cooled off here in California. And I know for you guys on the East Coast, I don't wanna be where you're at right now today. It looks pretty darn brutal. So um, taping went really, really well. Uh, before I get into that, well, no, maybe I'll get into that right off the bat. Um, no, I want to look at quilts. You guys sent me a bunch. Of, you sent a bunch of quilts, and this is the Sequoia Sampler. And we'll her. Here we go. Why can't I see the whole thing? Oh no, I can't see your name. This is horrible. Um, John, is there any way I can get over more and see what I typed here? Anyways, this is by. S. Oh, I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry. <laughs> oh, shoot. If you're watching, type your name in there and say it's mine. <laughs> Look at how John, how I, I can't see the whole thing. Oh, shoot. Um, I adore this. I love the, the bird houses and, and the wheelbarrow with the flowers. Please raise your hand. <laughs> oh, this is so embarrassing. Is it going to happen? It's going to happen. No, let's see. There's no way to increase the size of the box. No, there's no way to increase the size of the box. No. Shoot. I beg for forgiveness. I beg, beg, beg. Um, now, this is Sharon's. I can see Sharon's name coming up here. Oh, good grief. Now, let me tell you something. Uh, I remember something Sharon said in her email, and it was that she's hand quilting this. Yay! Another hand quilter. Okay, but then look at the other thing that Sharon did that I think is like super uber cool. Um, she put some 3D flowers on it. So um, I, I, I'm going to be curious if you're going to, if they're going to cause you problems while you're hand quilting, if their threads are going to get caught around it and stuff like that. So I hope not, but um, I'll be curious. Super cute. Um, this is Luz. Look at that. And those flowers, you know, it almost looks like those flowers are three-dimensional too. I'll bet they are, right? Super cute. Working on opposite sides of the color wheel, purple and yellow. So, oh, oh, you're trying to get the cord out of the way. I have a technical director here right next to me. Um, and then Kim got this into me this morning. If that isn't happiness, I don't know what is. And I, I, I mean, Kim, don't make sure your house is locked at night because I might come steal every single polka dot that you have in that whole thing. So anyways, um, let me talk. Oh, oh, I want you guys to go get pens and pencils, right? Or a pen, <laughs> pens and pencils. How about a pen and or a pencil and a piece of paper to write on? Because I'm going to do things a little off kilter today and I want you to be able to take notes, okay? Um, and then also, we are still cutting like there's no tomorrow in shipping. Um, I'd say John spent Saturday and Sunday actually folding fabric. It was at first painful to watch and then he got into a really cool rhythm. And then I cut, 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 cut. So what is going out now are the hand dies. And I, I, need, I need a big, huge sign that says, pre-wash, use color catchers. Get that excess dye out. This is not even a negotiable, okay, you guys? You've got to rinse out that fabric, especially if you're gonna be using whites with it. But nonetheless, you must rinse it out. You can use Centropol, you can use Retain, you can use Color Catchers. Get rid of that dye. And, I, and I've gotten dire warnings from many of you. So please, 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 please. Um, the other, okay, now I'll talk about taping. It went really, 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 really well. Um, it was super fun. We were all taking all the precautions that we can. Um, I trust my peeps 100% and everybody was masked, etc. Um, except there was one situation that I want to discuss in a moment here. Um, Su Sujata Shaw was on. She is an Indian and has lived in India and takes trips to India with people with Amy Butler and guests. 
And I just love what she brings to the quilting table. Her colors, well, they're so reflective of India. I mean, just, oh. And then uh, Tara was on Fawnham and Fawn, I'm gonna say it wrong, Fawnham, Fawn, Fawnham, Tara. She's in my mini group. Um, she worked with color in a way that I had not seen before. And so that was very, very exciting to me. She's got a real eye for it. And I, she taught this old dog some new tricks and we're gonna talk about color today a little bit too. And then Jennifer Sampu is on and she's got all this fabric that radiates from one color, like a dark blue down to a whisper blue. And it's all about digital fabric. And uh, she had some fun, really easy, snappy, great, summer things you projects you can put together and then lynn coolish was on and she um for me personally took the fear out of dyeing fabric i always thought that there had to be like you know these big cartwheels on dyeing fabric man she stripped it down to dyeing 101 and we also did shibori enough that i'm actually excited about perhaps doing some shibori myself so and then pokey came with maybell Maybell is her Airstream that she got after the Napa fires, and she named it after, um, on Instagram, there's uh, an account called Goats of Anarchy, <laughs> and I guess Maybell, not Mabel, I was saying it wrong, Maybell was so fat and so pregnant with I don't know how many goats, and when she looked at her Airstream, she goes, oh, it looks like Maybell. <laughs> um, and then Joe and Julie came, Joe Cunningham and Julie Silber, and we talked about using old quilts for inspiration, which you know I do all the time. And then we did field pieces with F Freddie and Diana. So Freddie, M Freddie, Freddie, and then Diana McClun. Freddie goes by first name, red is a neutral. So Freddie Moran. Okay, so what happened was um, when I was a little girl, uh, I looked at adults and I thought they had it all figured out. You know, they had parenting figured out. They had right and wrong figured out. They had it all figured out. And now as an adult, I realize, and having had raised my children, you don't have anything figured out, okay? And you just kind of go with a wing and a prayer. So what happened was before taping, um, several of us went and got COVID tested. I talked about that a little bit back. And then uh, John and I stayed in seclusion. And so I felt extremely confident that we are in a total safe zone here, okay? And our very first guest was Sujata. And what Shelly, the producer, decided, because it was all new territory, you guys, completely new territory, was that we would give um, people the opportunity to go with a mask or without a mask, a face mask, you know, whatever made them comfortable. And because Sujata knew I had been tested and she had stayed indoors, she uh, chose to go without a mask. Everybody else chose to use a mask. And when Sujata got home, she w just started beating herself up on why, because I so believe in masks. She, you know, she made masks, she wears masks, the whole thing, so why? And as the two days of taping went on, I we were all just becoming like, the whole mask thing became an issue in as much as everybody wanted to wear masks. So when I went to return Sujata's quilts yesterday, um, she asked me in, thank you Sujata, I think she might be here. Um, she asked me in and the first thing out of my mouth is we've got to talk about these masks. And she felt the same way as myself. If we had a do-over, we would have done it wearing masks because we both feel that's how you keep people safe. Now, were we safe? Yes, we were safe, but that's not the image we want to put out there to the world. So um, please, when you watch the show, don't beat us up. We've done enough beating up on ourselves. Oh, and as we spoke, we thought, you know what? We just got to pull on our big girl panties and just say, we, we did it wrong, okay? We, in our own opinion, and everybody has to do what feels right to them. So with humble apology to Sujata, um, I would never want to do anything that would cause you 
what it caused you and it caused me and but you know what that's what builds friendships too so that went on and I just want to put it out there and it's Sujata Shaw and she's doing a blog on it too talking about it so now the thing I want to say about Sujata is that she does digital teaching and so you might want to go to her website and check her out but also get your pencil and write this down right now this is the first thing um, Lyric Kennard and Sue Blyweiss are putting together a Meet the Teachers. And what it is, is on um, Wednesday, August 5th, and Wednesday, September 2nd, teachers all over the world, possibly, will get three minutes to present. They filled up one day, and then they filled up another day, and there might even be a third day. And so what you'll do is you go and register for this. I'll tell you how in a moment. And then these are people that you can watch. I'm going to watch it and um, that you could potentially have come and do digital pre presentations to your guild. So this is very exciting. And I'm so honored. And I'm so proud that um, these two gals have put this together. <clears throat> okay, here it is, you guys. Global Quilt connection.com global quilt connection.com <coughs> excuse me so I, I just love that okay so I want to talk I'll just a little bit about color because um, because not everybody is super confident when it comes to color uh, well, let me tell you my rules that I made for myself. Uh, the mystery to me, this is the mystery to me, reminds me of the Fleetwood Mac song, which I love, is that I don't know how this quilt is going to turn out. I have no idea, but I made rules for myself. The first rule was that I was going to do blocks out of this book, and that's why I recommended that you get this book. Uh, by the way, today's going to go a little bit long. Um, and then my second rule was that I was going to work with my solids, and put white in most of them. You can see here I didn't put white in. Um, I did this one kind of right off the bat and hated it, but I'm, we're gonna work it in. And then this one, but the rest it all has white. And then I'm going to insert the KAIF fabric, okay? Uh, maybe broken dishes on the inside. Um, I will not know exactly what this quilt's going to be until it starts singing, okay? I think it's singing, but, mm. and there's some, there's some considerations for the block I, blocks I chose, too. I'm not going to go into that today. So let's just talk about this first block that we're going to do. Um, let me get over here. Get rid of this. I haven't done three cameras in so long that it's kind of, it is a mystery to me, all right? Okay, so let's talk about the color wheel. Wait, why didn't it go down to that? Let's talk about the color wheel. So um, please talk negative comments on fabric. Negative comments on fabric. I didn't know I did. I'm sorry if I did. Hmm, okay, so trying to get the camera to go down. Hey, John, here we go again, help me. Oh, there we go, I know what I'm doing wrong. No, why isn't it going down? Hmm. Shouldn't I just click that and it goes? Oh, maybe this blank, maybe this went blank. No? Do we still have the fabric for the mystery? Um, we're cutting like mad. I don't know the status of it. Okay, there we go. I guess I just didn't punch hard enough. All right, so let's talk about a color wheel. If you don't own one, you know, you can get a beautiful one like this, like Jones, um, or you can just print something up. This is really the, the exact color wheel. Um, like for instance, well, I don't even want to get into it. Okay, but this is a beautiful tool. I have it hanging in my, um, above my, paint station at all times and I quickly reference it all right but then Katie Fowler came out with this and I thought it's kind of really cool and what it is is she has gotten these discs so let's take this out and this is disc number one and this is a complement it tells you it's a complement inside 
and then you can put it on the wheel and then spin it around and go and be confident that these different colors will work beautifully together all right so i think this is pretty neat but the other thing and i'm showing you that these things is because some of you are going to work with your own fabric of which i would definitely um i mean do it heck i want to see i can't believe what you guys did with the other one okay so this one is analogous okay and this first block actually I'm working with is going to be analogous, okay? But I didn't get to it by using Katie's color wheel. I'll show you how I got to it. I got to it by pulling up this fabric of caves, all right? And then I chose these three fabrics. It's And it's analogous. It's all on one side of the color wheel, right up in here beautiful right absolutely beautiful so um this is the block let me get this out of the way i don't want to say i'm discombobulated but i haven't sewn in so long um i've been doing the powerpoint so it's like ah how do i do that now this is the block that we're going to do first all right and it's actually the only difference is this has colors down the middle and where it is in your book, it's called Double X, and it's on page 43, right here, all right? Now, this may seem like a stupid thing to do, but I would strongly recommend it. With either your purple disappearing pen or your friction pen, go to, where well, I'm doing six inch blocks, you can do whatever you want, go to the six inch and circle it. Okay, if I'm using my purple pen, it will go away, you know, by in a couple days. So I haven't defaced my book, so to speak. And then, or you can use this pen and then go hit it with your iron and it will go away. I made a block the wrong size because I just was not paying attention. Okay, so circle that. We're doing six inch. Yes, John. I, 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 there's a guy there's a man lurking in here okay no no okay so let's i'm going to do something a little bit different than i did last time what i'm going to do and hang with me on this you guys let's look at the cutting numbers again page 43 i need so this is what we'll do because you're working with solids, every single little thing is going to show, okay? Every little piecing mistake. So when you can trim up, it's it's a good thing, okay? So here on A, you're going to create these half square triangles, and I'm not going to cut them as half square triangles. I'm going to cut them just as a square. You might want to take notes over here. So I'm going to go on to cut three squares of white I've decided at uh, two and seven eighths actually I'm going to add an eighth to it and I'm going to trim up so I'm going to cut them at three all right and then I did three different colors two and seven eighths I'm going to add an eighth of an inch make it at three and then I'm going to want C three squares at two and a half a square is a square and you don't you don't have to um, fiddle with it. So those are my cutting numbers. Three, three, two and a half. All right. Then the next thing I'm going to do, which I did earlier, I've decided I'm going to do three different colors on this one. This and this one we're going to do right now. John said he wanted me to make this big enough for the bed, and I'm like, no. And then I thought, well, if I'm double making the blocks, maybe I can. So on the three white three three inch blocks I'm go I drew a line corner to corner with the friction pen all right I've shared this before I use this pen only when I am where it's not going to show if I were to mark the top of this fabric somewhere with this there's a darn good chance it would leave a ghost line so what I'm going to do now I've marked it corner to corner I'm going to line these guys up and a lot of the information may be the same as what we did in the Sequoia quilt but I just think that a lot of things bear 
to be repeated. And I'm approaching this as a fresh new class in case we have new people with us, all right? So let's go over to my sewing machine setup. The first thing is if you have a fancy machine that has extra wide feed dogs, like my Vernina does, if you're on a more expensive machine with a ton of stitches, your opening is gonna be either seven or nine millimeters wide. That is gonna drive you out of your mind. If you don't, oh, what's the name of the block? Uh, double X, that would have been nice, huh? <laughs> Sorry guys, double X page 43 um, if you use this sort of um, throat plate when you're doing minute piecing it's not going to work so many machines come with a single hole throat plate uh, mine did not uh, I don't know so anyways go buy one if you don't have it in fact my friend Lois Johnson just got this machine and uh, it did not come with this and I said that's a non-negotiable in fact she, she I mean she just got it I, I bet she's still naming it and she said well I, I should I piece until I get this and I'm like no don't I'll drive you bonkers then um I can only speak to my machine, but I am using the number 97D foot on my Bernina. I also use the number 37D. The difference between the two feet, I wonder if I have a 37 right here, is that the 90, lo and behold, it's a miracle. The 97 has a little wider um, footprint on this side. So it goes down and hits the um, feed dogs. The 37 does not. Either foot will work smashingly. And then the other thing is right here in the front of my machine is this little carved in spot. And if you don't have that, what I would suggest, and that's my, that's my quarter inch right there. If you don't have it, what I would do is I would go put my needle down on a, on a ruler drop down the feed dogs, or I mean drop down the presser foot, I'm sorry, and I would run a tape or something there because in the end, that's where I'm watching. I'm not watching under there, all right? So, yeah, that's good. I'm using uh, 80 weight polyester thread on the bobbin, and I'm using a uh, 60 weight cotton poly on top. And with the 80 weight on your bobbin, you can sew forever and ever, amen, because it's so fine, but it's also very strong. So in this case, I can't use that lead in, right? Because I'm doing this little trick here. So if I don't have a good quarter inch, you can also mark, you can also mark like right there with your pen. Now see how it's shifting here? That's driving me crazy. So what I'm gonna do with this next one, and I just learned this this last round, is I'm gonna take this fabric glue and I'm just gonna do a little hit of glue there and a little hit of glue there to hold it in space. It in space. Oh, speaking of space, today was the day in 1969 they walked on the moon. And I know exactly what, what I was doing. I was graduating eighth grade. I had been on a trip to Catalina Island, a sailboat trip with the YMCA. I came home. It was hotter than the hinges in Livermore. We were sitting in the living room and my parents were watching it. I remember it like it was yesterday. I'm being so careful to line this up, you guys, just so darn careful, okay? So here we go like this. All right, I'm gonna cut it, or you can also end, end it with a tail. A lot of people like to do that because that also keeps it from being eaten up in the hole. I'm gonna cut it, I'm gonna cut it, and then I'm gonna go down this side. 
You know, I have to tell you, and I'm not kidding, this has been a real challenge for me. And it's not the creating, the creating has been a blast, but it's been a real challenge for me because I've gotten into all this art stuff and, and precision like this just is not that necessary. So there we go. I guess I'll do this. Although I do love the thread cutter on my machine like there's no tomorrow. All right. So remember, these were supposed to be cut at three, it's two and seven eighths. Why is this, why is... John, what, why is my thing being so goofy? Go, 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 go. Huh. Look at all you people. It's not letting me transfer over again to the other camera. Okay, I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna go there. Hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. I'm glad I wore deodorant today. <laughs> See, then it worked. Isn't that crazy? Huh. Weird. That's not even I the one I wanted. Go to That's not even the one I wanted. Oh, that's the one I wanted. Okay, go to camera and now do what? Go to my phone. There we go. Got a new way to find you guys. Good grief. Okay, so here we are right here. Now, what I'm going to do is before I cut this, okay. It told you in the book to do it at two and seven eighths. We did it at three. I'm going to go over here to my pressing station and I am going to set the seams so Marianne Bonds can sleep at night. She couldn't believe that I didn't set the seams. Oh, I forgot to sew one more thing. Sorry, guys. Hold on while I do this. Um, don't you just love the sound of a sewing machine? And if your sewing machine doesn't sound good, Go put some oil on it. It's crying to you. All right. So I'm gonna, now see, this is the cool thing with these pens. Set it, goes away, that. Set it, goes away, that. Set it, set those seams. Every single thing you can do to make this process better, uh, more exact, do it when we're doing when we're working with solids. All right, see that one slipped a little bit and that's the one I didn't glue. So I think that may be a new part of my routine. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut it corner to corner. One, two, I just, analogous is just such a, soft, beautiful, subtle way to work. I mean, look at that, you guys. That's bad, all right? New rule, glue it. All right, so now I'm gonna go back here and I am going to open up the seams, not open them up, I'm sorry, press the seams to the dark, to the dark. I'll layer them up like this too. There's one, two. There was one block that um, somebody looked at and said um, it looked like a swastika, and it was spools. Couldn't see it, couldn't see it, couldn't see it. When everybody was taping here, I asked a couple people, and they said, yeah, it does. So I took it out, and you guys can be happy because it was super hard to piece, okay? I mean, super hard, because they were basically three-inch spools. So let's just lay this out. All right, now regarding bunny ears. Oh, no, I'm not ready to do it yet, sorry. So I'm gonna take this little ruler, you can use any ruler you want, and it. I'm gonna cut it down to two and a half, all right? Because it, it's a little bit bigger because of what I did. So I'm taking this line and I'm going right here. Um, you can see, see the line, eh, shoot, there's the camera right there. 
take for a second for it to dial in. It's a little blurry, but it's there. So I'm going to take this and I am going to trim. It slipped a little bit. This, um, we have these anniversary mats and um, we got a batch that wasn't good to do the trick on where you can spin it. But I'm gonna go like this. Okay, this is perfect. One is perfect. I'll tell you something um, I've been doing is on Sunday afternoon, I hang out with uh, Meryl and Wendy and we sew uh, via Zoom. And it's lovely. It was all handwork at first. And then last week I was working on some of these blocks. And then Meryl was sewing yesterday. Okay, get on there. Now Sally Collins, you guys, uh, if you want to watch his show on precision and on getting it really right, go to the search function and get Sally Collins. She is a master of getting it right. I took her class because I heard she was one of the best teachers out there. And I realized, boy, I, did I ever need to step up my game. And I think we have a DVD. I'm not 100%. John could tell me we have a DVD on it. And I'm trimming to, what, two and a half, right? Two and a half. And here's the thing. I talk like a big, tough sailor in as much as I do this and this and this. I don't in real life. And then I pay for it. Okay. All right. All right, 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 right. It made me so happy to see all your sequoias. But along with that, a lot of you said it was helping you stay out of a funk. And I will tell you, it has helped me stay out of a funk. Okay, there we go. Now, let me look at the book. Let's see. The light goes to the outside. I could cut off those bunny ears if I wanted. I think I'm going to mix it up. So for those, of, no, that would be down there then. For those of you that don't understand why it's called a mystery, it's because this whole thing is a mystery to me. I honestly do not know how it's going to turn out. I'm sharing with you how I work. So now we've got a nice little nine patch, right? So I'm gonna sew this to this. How are we doing on time? Ooh, sorry guys. I am gonna glue it. I pin when I have to match up seams. And if you don't have really good pins, that is an investment that is kind of a non-negotiable. There's my little sticks falling out, that's weird. I'm gonna go here. And I always, always, always lay out my blocks, always. Typically, I will do it like on a, um, pizza box with a fleece on it or something like that. It is so easy. It is so easy to flip things. Okay, so now I'm gonna sew. On this side, I want to see white. On this side, I want to see green. And I know that's, you know, kind of duh, but yes. Okay, camera, John's. There we go. Whoops, that got bumped. There we go. I really like that I can go up to the top. See how I'm feeding in right there? Right there. Again, if you don't have it, drop down some painter's tape or moleskin or something so that you can see. Because in the end, and this is something I learned way back, in the end, once that needle is going up and down, it's too late. The action's down here. I did, by the way, um, oil my machine and all that for taping. And boy, it sounds like a different machine right now. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put this here, put this here. Oh, whoops, now that goes there. 
wait a minute, that goes, I gotta show you, I'm having a hard time here. <laughs> okay, how does this thing go? Help me! Okay, so this goes, wait a minute, he, nope, that's not right. That goes there. Oh, good grief. I got him out of order. Okay, I know this one goes down here. And that goes there. That goes there. Now I want that up there. Then that would go like that. Okay, now now, now we're smoking. <laughs> See, even a trained professional can get goofed up. Um, now I'm going to sew this. And I'm going to sew this. I'm not going to bother with that. Because that's wasting your time. But I want to show how I pin things together. So I'm going to go here. John's starting to bring in questions. What are some questions? Okay. I'm going to go like, make sure I get it straight. It's all in the details. That's a D. Christopher did a class for us on TQS, and it was called, It's All in the Details. And it is. Okay. I mean, these are quote unquote simple blocks. Ha ha ha. There's that. And then I'm gonna sew this. See, I don't like how that's hanging out. I mean, in real life, I would just ignore it. Okay, there's gonna be a little lump underneath. Because there's the other seam. Get over there. It's like, Every step of the way, if one thing goes wrong, then the next thing's gonna go wrong, the next thing's gonna go wrong, etc. Okay. So here is this. Here is this. Yes. I'm going to press the seams this way on the top this way and then I'm gonna press no actually I just lied I'm gonna press these in and these out that's what I'm gonna do so let me go press these seams out and this in here we go I like to press from the top because you have less of a chance of uh, pressing a tuck into it it's very rare I finger press my iron went off. How weird. You know what? This place is haunted. <laughs> I'm going to do this one in. Oh, very, very odd. Oh, I didn't put it in its cradle. I own two irons. I, I have this little Panasonic next to me on a TV tray with an ironing pad. And then I have an Olisa over by my cutting stuff. Okay, so there we go. Okay, oh, this looks good, yay. Now, you want this to be floating in a quarter of an inch and this floating in a quarter of an inch. And I'm gonna go press this one more time because the iron wasn't hot and you really, really, it, to me, pressing will make or break any quilt you're working on, whether it's art quilt, whether it's whatever, and it, I have no steam right now. Also, I wanna note that all the edges are straight a grain. All right, so this is going to be, okay, see that? Uh-uh, that's a no-no. I want you people to know I'm a very brave woman to be doing this live. <laughs> very brave. All right, okay. So right here, there's an X, okay? The thread is XX. I'm going to put a pin in right at that X. But then I'm going to turn it over, and it's it's not in the point. So sometimes this will lie to you. You want it to be right in the point. I missed it again. I got to do it right under my face, and then I'll show you. Yeah, that's good. I want it to come right through the point. And then I'm going to go right through the point here. I love pins that are silk pins, extra fine glass head. Then I poke this down, and while it's poked down, I'm gonna put a pin in a sixteenth of an inch before and a sixteenth of an inch after. And note that I am pinning, I am going under 
where I'll be sewing. I will find students will be pinning out here in Kingdom Come when you really need to be up here. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open it up and make sure the line goes straight across, which it does. So I've got a fighting chance to get it right. All right, now these are two seams that are pressed in opposite directions and they align. And I'm gonna put in a 16th of an inch after, before, a 16th of an inch after, before. It does not matter which way your heads are going because um, I'm gonna pull them out. They mine go this way because I'm a left-hander. So that's what's going on there, okay? So let's go back to the camera here. I'm so glad John figured that out. I want, I don't want this to be uh, skewed like this. So again, I can glue it. I can drop a pin in it. Every bit of precaution goes a super long way. And then this one, I'm gonna line up right there. This is so much fun, oh, so much fun. Okay, now you're not supposed to sew over pins. You guys know that. Do I? Of course I do. Um, did I break a machine? Yes, I did. And I'm watching that seam right there. Or not that seam, that groove. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm leaving this in and my the front of my machine um, does get stretched up, but it's part of doing business. Okay, and I like how this is open right here because this can stay in a lot. Some machines have like a hole like this and a little thing. Um, I would think about having a jeweler take it out like this. Did you see that I pulled it out right at the last stinking second? Now I'm watching there. Note how slow I'm going, like a turtle. Okay, then it comes the moment of truth. And if it doesn't work, I'll show you how to fix it. Okay, I don't love that at all, but at least it's not cut off. I'm gonna live with it. If I wanted to fix it, what I would do is I would go take out the stitches from here to here and then just reposition it. I'm not gonna waste your time with that. And how I pick out stitches is this, and I might fix it when I get off camera. Go clip one, two, three, four. Well, let's just do it for Pete's sakes. One, there's that. You know, even though the thread is so fine, this polyester, uh, it is really strong. Oh, the other thing that I do is I go like this. And I'll just lift it up here, lift it up here. Okay. And one of the good news is that it was going straight across from each other. So that was a good, good news. So I'm just going to put this pin in here. I, I guess while we're going through this whole thing, you're going to see me fixing things a lot. <laughs> so I'm going to go here. And I'm going to go here. All right. I did my nails for the taping. My daughter showed me how. Here we go again. Come on, baby. Ta-da! It's to go off a little bit, but nah, I absolutely can live with this. Okay, then as far as pressing goes, Let's see, I will, I'm, okay, so then I'm gonna do the same thing down here, right guys? There's no sense for me to do that. Pressing, I got a couple choices. When seams, when you have a bunch of seams coming together, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, 
if I have six or more seams coming together, I will seriously consider pressing open. Otherwise, I'll press from one direction to another. But let's press open just for grins, okay? Here we are right here. And how I press open is opposite of how I press things from one side to another. I go to the back side and with my finger, I don't like that. Oh good, it's hot now. I just open it up. And there are tools that you can use to press seams open, like hams and stuff like that. But you know, it's so funny, I consider my nails a tool. Even a short okay, now look at that. No, no naughty. I didn't used to think it was that important. It's super important. Super naughty. And I might even, I don't have it over here, take some um, some best press or something like that and do that and then just go and go like this. And you have got one beautiful baby block ready to go. So, whew, sorry that it took a little bit longer. I had so much to cover in the beginning. Um, John, do we have questions? Oh my gosh. <laughs> you, you're excused if you want to go right now. How many double X blocks will you need? I don't know. I'm always going to say I don't know. I did too. Um, it's just up to you. It's, it's up to you. So just make a couple, okay? And remember, if you make something and it doesn't work out, nobody cares. It's no big deal. It's all a learning exercise. What thread weight again? Okay, I'm using Quilter Select 80 weight in the bobbin, and I'm using, it's 100% polyester, and then I'm using 60 weight on top, which is a, a polyester core with a long Egyptian staple cotton on the outside. And it's really beautiful, you guys, because it does help with accuracy. I'm kind of really shocked at how it does. Okay, what glue pin are you using? This is also, um, it's the Fabric Glue Stick by Quilter Select. It's a clone of Charisma from Japan. It's lovely. Dries really fast, so you have to put the lid off. You saw my little glue was falling out. I Probably I left it with the lid off. Okay, glue pin. Right, right. How many? Um, is this block in the first block tool book? I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. Okay, why will a seven um, millimeter throw plate drive us crazy? because it will push the tips down. It will go down into there. If you don't have a single hole throw plate, not so much on this one, okay? But just get it for yourself. It's like, just get an iron, okay? Just trust me, there is a huge difference. And if you're, if, I know with Bernina's, if it comes with an embroidery unit, the, set, the single hole throw plate is included. So you, it might very well be in your box of tools and stuff like that. Finished, oh, the finished block sizes will finish at six inches. If you wanna do eight inches, go ahead, but pick a size and be consistent with it, all right? Um, fabric requirements using your own fabric. I don't know. What we mailed you, what people bought were six half yard cuts of caves and then 12 quart fat quarters or something of solids and then maybe a yard of white um, because it's scrappy and I don't know what I'm doing I, I can't tell you that's that's the really um, aggravating part here is that it is truly a mystery and it's a mystery to me you're gonna see how I work all right where did you find the iron weight is my mom's Antique stores, right? It'll cost you, or, or find it on eBay, it'll cost you, you know, 10, 20 bucks for the iron and 100 bucks to ship it to you because it's so heavy. So, okay, guys, um, have a great day and I'll see you on Wednesday at 10 o'clock. All right, have a good one. Bye bye.